Let's talk about the two worlds concept that the brilliant Izuka totally didn't make up on the spot without thinking it through. I think pretty much everything characters in depth said about it in this video is correct. I don't think this retcon makes sense, I don't think it is the correct response to fan backlash, and I think it raises more questions than it answers, which is the opposite of what a retcon is supposed to do. It's retroactive continuity, it's supposed to answer specific questions and bring clarity, not confuse us even more. That being said, I don't think it's a bad decision. In fact, I think it's the best answer to the plethora of lore and world building inconsistencies and questions that the series just doesn't answer. I think that right now there's not nearly enough thought put into it to satisfy anyone or make sense of anything, but I think the idea can and should work with more details. For those of you who don't know, I've covered how the multiverse concept is used in the Sonic series and how it fixes some glaring issues in continuity with very minimal effort. If Sega was to rework the two worlds concept into a multiverse concept, then I'm sure a lot of people would dig it. For example, a huge problem that most fans picked up on is Blaze's continuity. She appeared as two different characters in two different games back to back. Izuka the idiot said that Blaze was the same Blaze from Sonic Rush, she just forgot about the events that happened in Sonic Rush. And everybody else forgot what happened in Sonic Rush. Not that Sonic Rush isn't canon, but everyone collectively got amnesia, but only in reference to Blaze. While well, Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. This makes zero sense, of course. I mean, this is Azuka the idiot we're talking about here. This is the same man who said that the reason the moon isn't damaged in every game following Adventure 2 is because the moon rotated in such a way that every time we happen to see it, it's the side that didn't get blown up. He really is an idiot. I don't know how to make that any clearer. However, multiverse theory can account for the amnesia thing and Blaze having a vastly different character and background. The multiverse concept, for those who don't know, is the idea that there are multiple worlds or realities or timelines parallel to each other and similar in most ways except a few key differences. I propose that the act of time travel creates these alternate realities or timelines, which is similar to the way time travel works in Dragon Ball Z as seen in the Cell Saga. My proof of this is Sonic 06, where an events change in Sonic's time, but Silver's time remains unchanged no matter what. Not just that the future is in the same state, but that the exact same events that led to the exact future that Silver is from still happen, despite the direct changes Silver makes to the past. There's also the Silver from the Rivals games, who meets Sonic and Co. for the first time in those games and has a similar future. But instead of Iblis destroying the world, it's the Ifrit. And instead of Blaze being from his world, it's Eggman Nega who's from his world. Eggman Nega, who is his arch nemesis in the Rivals games, but in 06 is nowhere to be found or even mentioned in the entire game. Also, Blaze recognizes Crisis City and Generations, which she shouldn't be able to do, considering she not only disappeared into another dimension, I might add, but Crisis City was supposed to be erased due to Elise blowing out the Flame of Hope. So even if you could explain away the fact that Crisis City exists in Generations, you can't explain why Blaze remembers it, nor why Silver doesn't recognize Blaze in Generations, if he's the same Silver from 06 and she's the same Blaze from 06. But herein lies my definitive proof of the multiverse concept in Sonic. The fact that all of these discrepancies can only be explained through the concept, but also the games themselves directly giving proof to it. Classic Sonic's world and Blaze's world are described as different dimensions existing parallel to modern Sonic's world, and there are literally two different versions of Sonic, Tails, and Robotnik that appear side by side. And for the final piece of irrefutable evidence that supports the multiverse concept, I present this quote from Robotnik in 06, all existing timelines. All Timelines. Plural. Multiple. All of this is clear proof that the Sonic series works on the multiverse concept. It's not a headcanon. It's not a theory. It's not a wild guess. Multiverse is a thing 
in the Sonic series. It is an objective fact that can and has been proven. Everybody got that? Good! Now that we got that out of the way, let me give you an example as to how this works. As I said before, in 06, despite the various changes made to the past, the future remains unchanged, even at the end of Silver Story. Iblis has still ruined the world, and everything that leads to Iblis's freedom still happens. Therefore, there must be at least two timelines that the characters are time-traveling from. One where Sonic's present results in Silver's future, and one where Silver changing Sonic's present results in a different future that Silver doesn't get to see. Every time someone time travels, they split the timeline into two. One timeline where they travel forward in time, and another timeline where they just disappear and that timeline continues on without their influence. Meaning, there are multiple doppelgangers of each character with very similar histories, personalities, and experiences, but with key differences. So, Sonic travels to the future and that splits the timeline into timelines 1 and 2. Sonic goes to Timeline 2's future while Timeline 1 remains the exact same, only there's no Sonic there, so as time moves forward, events will be different without Sonic. When Sonic time travels back to the present, he creates another split which makes Timeline 3 where he ends up. Timeline 3's history is identical to Timeline 1 and 2's, the differences only start at the point in time where Sonic arrives, which changes their futures. The changes could be so minute that you can't tell the difference between them, or so major that one of the timelines doesn't have any similarities with the others. So Timeline 1's future could be Silver's future, and Timeline 2's future could be near identical to Timeline 1's, so you'd have two incredibly similar dystopian futures with a Silver residing in each of them. Everybody still with me? So let's say Sonic Chime travels to the past, what does that do? Well, obviously, he already exists in the past, so when the timelines split at the point of time travel, then one of those timelines will have a duplicate of Sonic. So now we've got Timeline 1, where Sonic 1 originated, and Timeline 2, the home timeline of Sonic 2, where Sonic 1 has traveled to. Both of them are identical and have the exact same history until the point where Sonic 1 arrives in Sonic 2's timeline. Then the only difference between them would be Sonic 1 having knowledge from his experiences in the future, so he would be privy to information that Sonic 2 isn't. Now let's say it's Sonic 2 time travels to the future, splitting Timeline 2 and making Timeline 3. When Sonic 2 arrives in Timeline 3, let's say Blaze is there. If she approaches him, he won't know her because he's from a timeline where he hadn't met her yet. So Blaze, who's in Timeline 3, where she hasn't met Sonic, wouldn't know him either, despite the fact that Sonic 1 would know Blaze 1 and vice versa. Now, let's take this into the context of Sonic 06. There are 12 instances of time travel in the game, all going from past to present to future. So including the timeline we start with, that's 13 different timelines. Let's say that Timeline 10 is the only timeline where Sonic Rush happens, so Blaze 10 no Sonic and Code 10. But in Timeline 5, Sonic Rush doesn't happen, so Blaze 5 has no idea who Sonic and Co. are. Let's say that Blaze 5 is the one we meet in Silver's future, Timeline 6's future. Blaze 5 traveled from her present to Timeline 6's future, met Silver 6, and went on adventures with him. So when she time travels to Timeline 7's past and sees characters that Blaze 10 would know, she wouldn't react to them because Sonic Rush didn't happen in her timeline. And, for the same reason, the Timeline 7 characters wouldn't know her because Sonic Rush hasn't happened there either. Does that make sense? The Sonic Rush Blaze travels back to her world, but Sonic 06 Blaze is a completely different character traveling to a completely different world, so of course neither 06 Blaze nor 06 Sonic and Co. would know each other from Sonic Rush because none of them experienced Sonic Rush. Sonic Rush Blaze wouldn't see any Sonics and Tails again until Sonic Rush Adventure, but even then we couldn't be sure that it's the exact same Sonic and Tails she met previously, nor that the Blaze they meet in Rush Adventure is the same Blaze we saw in Sonic Rush. It could be a different Blaze that experienced a very similar Sonic Rush incident, and that's the one that's meeting the particular Sonic we play as in Rush Adventure. 
but the Sonic we're playing as and the Sonic this Blaze has met previously are so similar, she wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them, meaning that they both can recognize each other and never realize that the version of the character they're with is not the exact same person they've met before. See what I mean? It's, it's complicated and filled with nuanced details that need to be properly explained in order to have a shred of worth to the continuity of the series. Now compare all of what I've said about the multiverse concept to Izuka the Idiot just saying, Well, Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. So yes, the two worlds concept as it stands is stupid. But no, I don't think we should cast it aside just because it didn't used to be like that or because Izuka's an idiot. It can work better than any other retcon, but it needs to be extensively detailed in a game. Not just in interviews or supplementary material, it needs to be the focus of a game so that its canonicity can't be questioned and everyone can know how it works. Not just Megasonic nerds like me.